Hello, brothers and sisters and friends. I'm going live in this moment for I have a desire to encourage, to strengthen, to uh, yeah, comfort the body of Christ, the members of the body of Christ, because it's a time of testing, like there are many, but this is particularly nasty. And people, of course, come with their own theories about what's happening. You may agree, disagree with this theory of that theory, whatever it is. But as grace believers and Milax right dividers, thank you, sister, we have always uh, the word of God, the word of truth, and we can go to the word of truth and the word of God to find direction and instructions in the sound Pauline doctrine. But guess what? Concerning the subject I'm talking about, which is the peace of God and peace with God, we can find instructions even in the prophetic because it's the same God. The God of Israel, the mighty God of Israel, the almighty God, the I Am, is the Father, okay? But it's also the Son, and it's also the Holy Ghost, because when we talk about God, we always must remember, as believers, and believing in the King James Bible, that we have the revelation, the truth, in the Word of God, in the King James Bible. So, in chapter 5, and verse 7 of the King James Bible, a verse that is missing from all the other perverted Bibles is <clears throat> chapter 5 of First John, First letter of John, chapter 5, verse 7, where it talks about the Godhead. Now, the Godhead <clears throat> is quoted by Paul in his letters three times. John, the Apostle John, which is one of the twelve, he said, for there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, with a capital F, comma, the Word, with a capital W. Whenever you find Word with a capital W, is referring to the Word of God incarnated, the Lord Jesus Christ. For there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, comma, the Word, the capital W, and the Holy Ghost, of course, Holy and Ghost, H, capital H, capital G, which we also call sometimes the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. The scripture is clear. You can accept it or reject, believe it or not believe. Remember, God is not forcing anyone to believe. God is offering and it's up to us to believe, receive by faith His Word, His revelation. Talking about the Word, as I said before, when it's capital letter, refers always to Christ, you have a perfect, a perfect proof in the Gospel according to John, where in chapter 1 it says, in verse 1, In the beginning was the Word. Okay? In the beginning was the Word, with a capital W. Well, when was it? In the beginning. And the Word, capital W, was with God, capital G. And the Word, capital W, was God, capital G. So, you know, I'm not making up the stuff I say. If I do, reject me straight away, because let God be true, and every man a liar. Romans 3, 4 says, Let God be true and every man a liar, including me, if I don't preach according to this. Remember, let's us remember, let's us remind to ourselves, to the inner man, to the spirit man, that God cannot lie. Our God is the God of truth. His word is the word of truth. If there are lies in our life, personal life, as well around us, 
is not coming from God. Jesus said in his earthly ministry to the nation of Israel, a truth that goes through the dispensation. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but by me. And Jesus is the one that tells about Satan that he is the father of lies. He is a liar and a murderer from the beginning. There is no truth in him. And every time he says a lie, he takes it from his own. You know what I mean? So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The corrupt, perverted Bibles, it said, was a God. They have the audacity to add an article, a God, and a God, small g, like uh, Jesus Christ was no God. But those liars, they will find out being unsaved and being enemies of God, unsaved. We all are, but we, there are the saved one and the lost one. That this is God in the flesh. The same was in the beginning with God. In verse 3, where all things were made by Him, Paul tells us, by Him and for Him, it was also in the book of Revelation. Everything has been created by Him and for Him, for His glory. All things were made by Him, and without Him, without the Word, the Lord Jesus Christ, was not anything made that was made. Remember, and God said, let there be light, said, spoke the Word, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior. In Him was life, and the light was the light of man. And the light shines in darkness. Praise God. And the darkness comprehended not. Now, this is a message to Israel, but there are truths that are interdispensational. The same, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, John the Baptist, we don't follow him. We don't follow his gospel. He was the herald of Christ, the king of Israel. At that time, when a king was entering a city, the herald with trumpets would go ahead of the king, announcing the coming of the king. So the people of the country, of the city, the place, the town, would prepare to receive, to welcome the coming king. Now we know, don't we, that Jesus Christ is the Messiah King of Israel. He is the fulfillment of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of prophecies. And only if you don't study the word of truth and you don't read and study this book, you can be ignorant about that and believe all the lies of the enemy. But once you go to the word, there are 350 plus in my website, I quoted them, all of them, prophecy concerning the first coming of Christ and even the second coming of Christ to the nation of Israel. So there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light. Light is with a capital L. So this is not the normal light. This is the light of God. God is light. Jesus Christ, the Word, is light. That all men through Him might believe. He's talking to Israel. So all men of Israel, at the moment we are not in this because Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 15, 24, I've been sent but only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And he said, you know, to his, to his twelve that he named them and sent to go and preach the gospel of the kingdom, not to go to the Gentiles, not to go to the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, his little flock. The flock of Israel. The Lord Jesus is the shepherd of Israel. The Lord my shepherd, Psalm 23, of course, is a messianic uh, psalm, but it was also a tribulation psalm that will be regarding the future restore Israel during that 70th week of Daniel. Anyway, I just continue to read to confirm what we're studying. That was the true light. 
It was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light, light with a capital L. He, you know, that was the true light, which light in every man that comes into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. You and I, we live in a world where there is an opposition, an attack on the person of Christ, his divinity and his manhood, that which is absolutely horrific, as devilish is from the peace of hell. And sadly, I got to say this without attacking anyone, I'll just say, many in the grace camp diminish the divinity of Christ. Some of them make of him just another prophet. But beside the fact that Jesus Christ had a ministry to be king, prophet, and high priest of Israel, is much more than that. He's God in the flesh. Paul received the total revelation. He said, is the fullness of the God that bodily. Anyway, he said, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew not. We don't believe in the Big Bang. We don't believe in the Jesuit Big Bang. We don't believe in what the so-called falsely called science tells us. We believe the word of truth. At least I do. I don't glory in myself. In myself. I glory in the Lord. I want to tell you something, my dear brothers and sisters and friends. The reason why... I go constantly to the Word of God is because in myself I am weak. W E A K. Some people, the new people, call me man of God, pastor. They might look at me in a special light, like I'm somebody really anointed. No reality. You got to know the truth. In my flesh, there is nothing good. Just like Paul said, I know that in me that is in my flesh. It was no good thing. So I go to the word of the Lord, of our Lord, our Savior, Redeemer, Creator, Almighty God, Preserver, to get all the direction, the encouragement, the spiritual food that my spirit man needs. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, and he's talking about, the people of Israel at that time, we were not there. Coloss Ephesians 2 explains that we were not in any possible way part of these covenants which were of the, 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 the come out of Israel. We were without God, without Christ, without hope in the world at that time. But now things had changed, praise God. But as many as received him in Israel, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Even to them they believe on his name. You see, this is the gospel of the name. We don't preach the gospel of the name, even though the name of Jesus is the greatest name ever. We preach the gospel of the grace of God in Christ. We preach the gospel of the cross. Anyway, as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them they believe on his name, which were born, these believers in Israel, the little flock, not of blood, so this is not a question, well, you know, genealogically my, I belong to this tribe or this tribe. Nor of the will of the flesh, like uh, some religious attempt. Nor of the will of man, but of God. Because they could be born again only of God. Because they were already born of God, but they needed to be born to be born again and you know the story in John 3 anyway I finish with this in verse 14 I love this 7 14 21 28 it's very important this number and the multiple in the Word of God because of that gives us a sense of understanding of completeness of perfection and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us we're talking about Israel and in, the, in brackets, John wrote, And we beheld this glory, the glory of the only begotten, begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, now that I quoted a lot of prophetic scriptures, which is totally about Israel, but we learn, praise God, yes, Brother Scott here, just like the gospel God preached to Abraham, yes, Galatians 3, Genesis 
12.17. Thank you, Brother Scott. I'm going to talk now about the peace of God, peace with God and the God of peace. Because you and I and everyone else, really, but especially the body of Christ, we need, in these very testing times, peace. God, one of the names of God is Yahweh Shalom. I don't know if I pronounce properly. Probably not, because I'm no Hebrew and I don't pretend to know Hebrew in any possible way. But know that Shalom means peace. There are many definitions of God by the names of God in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament, to be correct, in the Old Testament. Like, you know, Yahweh Rapha, I'm the Lord, your healer, or Yahweh Sinedu, <laughs> very difficult, the Lord, uh, your righteousness. And one of these is also Yahweh Shalom, which means, praise God, the God of peace. Now, the Apostle Paul, the Apostle, preacher, teacher of the Gentiles, he wrote in Romans, in chapter 5, in verse 1, from King James Bible. Therefore, being justified by faith, therefore, because what was written in, uh, in Romans 4, before 425, it says, who was delivered, talking about Christ, for our offenses, offenses, transgressions, sins, and was raised again, praise God, for our justification, we stand justified in the presence of our great God. In chapter 5, then he said, Therefore, as a consequence of what I just said, being justified by faith, not by anything that we do, we did, we don't do, we would do, no. Therefore, being justified by faith, with no words whatsoever, we have, we who? The body of Christ, the saved ones, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. Isn't that wonderful? In the letters of Paul, continually, continually, he, 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 the Lord, through the, the pen of Paul, the Holy Ghost, who is God, greets us, blesses us, uh, opens the, the, the salutation, and, and the salutation at the end with grace and peace. Sometimes grace, mercy, and peace. A triple, just like grace, just like charity, faith, hope, and charity. These are triplets of the gospel of the grace of God. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The term, the word peace, is found 403 times. 403 times in the King James Bible. Now, 4 plus 3 makes 7. <laughs> completion, completion, perfection. Now, there are many times in which this peace is referring, you know, in the prophetic. But then, of course, there are all the times in which we find the word peace in the letters of the Apostle Paul. Praise God for that. 403 times. That's really massive. It's a, it's a tremendous book. As our brother Paul Lucas said yesterday, the treasures, the gems, the jewels in this Bible, we study, study, study. We never come to the complete, I mean, our lifetime here, sorry, won't be enough to see how great and glorious and marvelous this word, because it's the word of God. Yes, praise God. Let's go on. We're talking about peace with God, which means because we are dead with Christ, once we have believed this glorious gospel of the cross, of the cross, the gospel of grace of God, God considers us dead with Christ, and we are invited to reckon ourselves dead with Christ. But we also are risen with Christ. And we also 
Imagine, we ascended with Christ and we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Wow! It's so much precious information. I want to say, my phone is giving troubles. I don't know what's happening. But anyway, let's hope. Resist. <laughs> In Philippians 4 7, Paul said, Rejoice in the Lord always, which means all the way. Doesn't mean always. The precision of the King James Bible can be seen also in having an S at the end of a word or not. Rejoice in the Lord always. During the course of this earthly life. And again I say rejoice. It doesn't mean we go around, you know, pretending. We rejoice in what He has done. In what is accomplished by His glorious death on that cross for our sins, His burial, and His glorious resurrection for our justification. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Now, I would like to underline that this has been written 2,000 years ago. He's not saying the Lord is coming back. He's at hand, he's there with you, he's in you. I just, for one moment, very quickly, I am a great supporter, sustainer, 24%, I mean 24 around the clock, 100% of Pauline doctrine. And I know very well that what is called the rapture, even though this word in the, in the, in the English Bible is not there, but in Latin, rapiemo, it's called the catching up of the body of Christ, is a reality. Being part of the mystery doctrine, we know from Paul that we don't know when it's going to take place, but we know that it's going to take place. Somebody was saying, don't take away the hope of the rapture from the body of Christ. That's crazy. I will never do that. That's my hope. Is Your hope is the body of Christ's hope to be caught up, praise the Lord, to meet the Lord in the air with, together with all the rest of the body of Christ, the resurrected ones and the ones that, I mean, praise God, because then we're going to be forever in every place with our Lord. But the point of the matter is, because there are no indications that whatever has happened in this life is a harbinger, I use a harbinger, a precursor of this second coming, no of this rapture, or no, of this great catching up, we must be very careful not to fall in the trap that because now there is this virus and tomorrow it's going to be a war or yesterday or, or it's going to be a tsunami or a big, enormous, gigantic earthquake or the collapse of the economy or whatever, that this is, means that the rapture is happening tomorrow or the day after or one month ago. I'm really against this. Because I'm a believer since 1972, and I'm 31. <laughs> and when I got saved, because even though it was a denomination which is very confused, one thing I remember, they preached the gospel of the grace of God, they preached the gospel of the cross, and that I believed. But in 1972, there was a frenzy about the rapture. There were people like uh, the late Chuck Smith of Calvary Chapel, they were... The, this guy, Hal Lindsay, I think is still alive, with the late, great planet Earth. And then there, were in, uh, there was this guy, I don't remember his name, but they wrote 80, 80 reason, 88 reason why Jesus is going to come back in 1988. All right. We're still here. Then when he understood it was a big uh, uh, blunder, he correct and say 89. But in the meantime, he sold... Millions of book, he didn't give the money back. Our Lindsay sold, I don't know how many millions of the late, great planet Earth. And Chuck Smith said that Jesus was going to come back in 81. I remember because I met Chuck Smith personally. I was his guest once in 1980-something in Costa Mesa, California. For, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter. The point of the matter is 
there is always somebody. The last one was Harold Camping, you remember? Where all the, his followers sold the property. I mean, you know, like in the book of Acts, you know. <laughs> Praise God, it's coming for us, the body of Christ. Why? Because if we are his body. We are his ambassadors of grace for Christ. We are ambassadors for Christ, ministers of reconciliation, and we have a word of reconciliation. It's coming. But I don't know, and I don't want to create a false hope, like the Miller, the Miller, you know, the famous, like the Seventh Day Adventist, they start with that, oh, you know, because of what's happening, it's coming. That would be devastating. It's been devastating religion forever. I remember, I was with my friends, we were going in the streets preaching that Jesus Christ's rapture was coming, and then he would come. We, we got it right, the first, first it was going to be the catching up the rapture, and then the second coming to Israel, even though we didn't understand the dif distinction. But, but you know, the Lord hasn't come yet. Is he late? He's got his schedule. Don't discuss that. Who can a puny man like man discuss why? He just continue to preach this glorious gospel. So another one can be saved. We should be happy. Really rejoice that the Lord hasn't come yet. So another one can be caught up at that day. Because if you get saved now, you're going to be caught up then. But if you are lost now, and it doesn't come in the meantime, but you die, you are lost. And you as an ambassador for Christ, you have missed an opportunity to preach the gospel to that person. Now we can't reach everybody. Let's reach the ones we can reach. Rejoice in the Lord the way. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. That's Philippians chapter 4, in verse 6. Be careful for nothing. Yeah, thank you very much, Paul. I'm freaking out every five seconds. <laughs> and many others are. Instead of being warriors for the Lord, we are warriors full of worries. Okay, in Australia you say, now worries, mate. But the reality is, we all worry. Some people are worry sick. Besides the fact they can be even sick and that adds to worry. But here it says, be, fair, be careful for nothing. But in everything, not necessarily for everything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. I still don't know the difference, but I think that prayer is you just talk and supplication when you pray intensely. I don't know. With thanksgiving. Never forget this. Why? Because I'm saved, praise God. I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heavenly places. Let your request be made known unto God. And people say, What do you mean? Doesn't God know everything? Of course He does. But what about the desire that we do this? Isn't He our heavenly Father in Christ? Yes. Are we sons and daughters? Aren't we part of his family, heavenly family, earthly family, this great family of God, aren't we? Don't you think that Father would just love for us to go and have a bit of conversation with him and say, Lord, that bamba, he said, how do you pray? We don't know how to pray as we all, Paul says. The Holy Spirit with groanings that cannot be uttered, so these are not tongues, prays. And the one who knows the mind of the Spirit, you know, so he intercedes for the saints. So we have the intercession of the Holy Ghost here, the intercession of Christ at the right hand of the Father. The Father loves us to the point that he gave his Son. The, the Son loves us because he gave himself. The Holy Ghost has sealed us. I mean, come on. Rejoice in the Lord the way. But what about the virus? Rejoice in the Lord the way. But what about the martial law? Whatever is coming. And again I say rejoice. Let you, you see the crows. Can you hear? I got lots of crows here. You know, we're in Australia, man. These are black crows and they make a lot of... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> eh. Yeah. <laughs> Be careful for nothing. 
But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests, plural, more than one, be made known unto God. As we pray, just talk with God. I don't know. Sometimes you can talk with, with your mouth, with your mind, thoughts. God knows. Whatever suits you, talk with Him. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now, the promise is here. Know that whatever you want, no worries, the name of Jesus is going to be given to you. We are not Israel. We are not under covenant promises. The both covenants, Paul explains, they are to Israel. We are the mystery body. We are the revelation of the mystery. We are the new creature. We don't even know how to praise we ought. <laughs> he just say, and the peace of God, verse 7 which passes all understanding, you see? Passes what? All understanding shall keep your heart. Now, it's not necessarily talking about this muscle here, this pump, which anyway is important because when the ticker stops, eh, you go. But it's talking about your spirit and mind. The mind also is very important. How many times people think and I am one of them. Am I mad? Yes, I am, because I'm a mid This <laughs> No, I don't know. Am I losing my mind because of all this anxiety and these worries and these problems? The reality is, we have the mind of Christ, which doesn't mean that, you know, Jesus gave his mind means we have the mind of Christ in the letters of the Apostle Paul, the peace of God, in the doctrine of the Apostle Paul, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds, now, please, notice, through Christ Jesus. Not because you prayed, you've been a good boy, a good girl, you are very zealous, no, because of Jesus. Christ Jesus. Is that? <laughs> Come on. This is not a religion, Christian religion. Make me laugh. This is all about God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. What He has done, time has passed. What He is doing, but now. What He will do, ages to come. And this book is all about him and his dealings with mankind, with his earthly nation Israel, and now with his new creature, which is the body of Christ, which is made up of me, you, your brother and sister, your friend who have believed at least once this glorious gospel of the cross. Paul says, doesn't matter what's coming my way. I have to fulfill my ministry with joy and preach the gospel of the grace of God. He says that in Acts 20, 24. And Paul went through so much. You can read. Finally, brethren, verse 8. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, any praise, think on these things. Nine. The number of the Holy Ghost. Seven, 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 the number of God. I can, that's another study. Eight, 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 the number of Christ. Nine, 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 the number of the Holy Ghost. It's like the gifts of the Spirit. Nine gifts. One Spirit, nine gifts. Now, those gifts are no more in operation because we have the full revelation of the mystery. The Word of God has been fulfilled by Paul. Not by the revelator, John. I know I'm going to say a lot of stuff that many people... Maybe they, but you know, takes time. Don't get discouraged. 
read and read and read the book of Romans. That's the foundation book. You can be established and yet you will be established preaching Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was hidden in God for ages and generations but now is revealed, is manifest. And they say, if they be, if they be, blah, 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 blah. this Italian man, you know, if I be any virtue, let's be American. No, let's be Australian, mate. If there be any virtue, if be any praise. <laughs> There be any virtue, there be any praise, think on these things. I find it really difficult. My flesh wants to think lots of stuff that are not really good. But that's the exhortation. Those things, he says, which you have both, listen now, learned, received, heard, and seen in me for. Do. Wow, now we're talking about words. After salvation. The so-called good words that God has ordained for us to walk in them. Praise God. Those things which you have both learned. How do you learn? By studying the word of truth. Reading, studying, taking notes, putting the things together. Listen to other brothers and sisters who are very gifted, I'm not very much in writing, and maybe not even talking. <laughs> I'm not very gifted, but the Word of God is gifted. You have both learned from Paul and received, because you receive the learning, the teaching, the instruction, the doctrine, the sound Pauline doctrine, by faith. And heard, you hear Paul preaching and seen in me. Man, Paul is dead 2,000 years. Yeah, but you can see in the world. Do. You know the consequences? The consequence of this, if you do this, and the God of peace shall be with you. Wow, now. Now we're talking. Now we're cooking with gas. We are peace with God. And now the God of peace is going to be with us in the moment we follow the instructions. Not for salvation, we already saved and sealed. For our work, on a daily basis. Thank you, Lord. The God of peace I found also in the King James Bible in Romans 15.33. Now the God of peace be with you all, amen. Brothers and sisters and friends, out there there is a crowd that would like to destroy and kill everybody and everything. Satan is the king of terror. He wants people living in fear. Anxiety. <laughs> Worry. Despair is evil. You know the Antichrist is called the wicked one. And people say, wicked! No, really, it's not very good. But God, our God, is Yahweh Shalom, the God of peace. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. In Romans 16, 20, 20, 16, 20, and the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Yeah, 2,000 years. What is 2,000 years for God? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Philippians 4, 9. Those things which have both learned and received heard of sin in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. And even in the book of Hebrews, which... Is doctrine to the Hebrews, not to us. Talks about the two covenants. Talks about Moses and Jesus. How much better is for Israel now the new covenant, Jeremiah 31, 31. But still there are information of the same God. It says, now the God of peace. Praise God. 
Thank you, brother. The God of peace, the brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep. You see this, the, uh, the, the flock of Israel. You might say, I'm a sheep of the Lord, I hear his voice. No, you're not. If you think you're a sheep of the Lord, I worry about you because you think you're Israel. You, that would be, you, you're unsaved. And you're blind. You've fallen. There is no Israel God now. And please don't go political. The reality is, whatever is down there in the Middle East is a geopolitical, economical, whatever choice, uh, movement. Uh, you can like, dislike, hey, I don't care. Somebody there needs the gospel like you there or me here. Or, or, every man and woman needs to hear the gospel, the grace of God. That's why we are ambassadors. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. You know, this blood of Christ works for Israel and works for us. For them, it's for the everlasting covenant. And for us, it's under grace. We're under grace. We're under grace. Don't put me under the law. I am under grace. Romans 1 7. The word that being wrong, beloved of God, called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 8 6. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritual, mind is life and peace. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God. Now, you know, people talk of the kingdom of God. We don't preach the gospel of the kingdom. No. But the kingdom of God is heavenly kingdom, earthly kingdom. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. I'm a vegetarian. You know, don't touch me with this meat. You want to be a vegetarian? Be. Who cares? I eat only meat. I don't care. What? Because the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. You don't, uh, you're not any better in, in your report with God if you only eat veggie or meat or, or both. That is a temporary thing. We are free under grace to eat whatever you choose. And we thank God for, for that because, you know, we need sustainment for this tabernacle, this body they carry around. But the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. But what? Righteousness. All right now. How in the world are you going, am I going to be righteous with God? Well, if you try to follow the law, you will never be. But if you trust this glorious gospel, the righteousness of Christ is going to be imputed to you. I'm in the book of Romans 4. It says, in verse 21, and being, it's talking about Abraham, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. He was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Imputed is a legal term. Once God imputes, that's it. Done deal. Now, it was not written for his sake alone, or that, you know, it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him, the raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses, he gave himself, and was raised again for our justification. Our God is alive, forevermore, praise God. That's why we preach, and that's why we got this power to preach, and this word which is alive, because he's alive. <laughs> For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace. You see, we're still in the theme, because of some time ago, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The joy of the Holy Ghost, once again, is not so much a physical manifestation that I go around, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Jesus, Jesus means that we rejoice that we are saved and sealed. We go to heavenly places. We are accepted in the beloved. Accepted in the beloved, you know, Ephesians 1, 6. 
all sins, you know, we are completing Christ, Colossians 2 10, and all sins are forgiven. We have the forgiveness of sins, Ephesians 1 7, Colossians 2 13, I think it is, uh, 1 14 also. And uh, we are accepted, blessed, complete, forgiven, and we are declared righteous because of Jesus Christ. And that's why the Apostle Paul says in Romans 14, 19, Let us therefore follow after things which make for peace, and things wherewith one might edify another. Now, I'll finish with it. I don't want to make, there's so much more, you know, we can't go through the entire Bible. I'll just finish with this. I don't want to make light of whatever is happening with this, virus i really don't know i have my opinions you have yours and everybody's got an opinion the reality is what's happening is horrible it's scary and horrible my country of origin where i lived 44 years of my life italy is in a lockdown i spoke with my nephew martin with on uh, Facebook is a great believer. Meet me, meet me, us. Praise God. Praise God. He's locked in. You know, he can't go out. If he goes out, unless he's got a very serious problem, uh, reason, the police might stop him, ask him document, and if his reason is not according, he might be even fined or arrested. I heard in Spain the, the, the army is going in the streets and say, Tom, say, Tom, with the speak. We're not far, I think, in Australia from that. Anyway, you know, problem with supermarkets, uh, the stuff finishes, everybody's freaked out, and we hear every day, it's getting worse, it's getting worse. And then there are the people say, you must be kidding, in China it's finished, and they're prospering, they, their industry is going full on. And in other words, whatever it is, we're all suffering for this madness. But why? Because we live in a present evil world. We live in a present evil world. And Satan is the god of this world. So he's running the show. If you go and research how many epidemies happen in history, there is pages. Some true, one true. We don't know anything. They tell us. But also, if you go and see how many people have been predicting the second coming, the from the first century until now, until yes, and until this very moment, there are people preaching, hey, the end is near, the end is near, the, the end of what? Nobody but God can put an end or the, the, the finalization of the dispensation of the grace of God. He will, because every dispensation started by his will, lasted, and he put an end. But we don't know when. So what is our job? It's to preach the gospel of the grace of God. It's to tell, and to tell to your friend, to your relative, the member of your family, your neighbor, or anybody that you meet in the road, or anybody that you can approach for that. My dear friend, Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. He was buried, he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. You are a sinner. All a sinner can show to the glory of God. You can't save yourself. You couldn't save yourself yesterday. No, now, no, never. But God has provided a free gift of salvation. Simple. Get them saved first, and then say, now that you're saved, you can study the word of truth rather than about it. I can help you, but at the end of the day, they need to study for themselves. Each one of us has to study, because study to show thyself, not yourself group, thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, is addressing me, is addressing you, and every single member of the body of Christ. And for those that happen, if they cannot read, you can help them by teaching, preaching. I know some that are saved, 
They believe in this glorious gospel, the grace of God. And if you ask, are you saved? Said, yes. Why? Because Jesus died for my sins. That's how he saved me. And then he was buried. He rose again third day for my justification. I'm saved and sealed by grace. Praise God. But they can't read and write. But it doesn't matter. God knows this. The most important thing, number one, the most important thing, the will of God in this dispensation of grace of God, He will have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. I hope that you get encouraged. I, I want to be encouraged all the time. In the Lord, in our daily walk. It gets tough as nails, especially if you're sick. Especially if you're sick and you're not a little flock that can go to Peter and be anointed with oil to be healed. And you, you go to the doctor sometimes, your doctors may be in good will, I don't know. Give you medication that instead of make you better, they make you worse. It's tough as nails to feel really the burden of uh, the disease, or the, the trouble, the, the, the mental distress and anguish, especially when you turn the television and they bombard you all the time with ah, uh, run right here. Get encouragement, like we all need this encouragement. There are brothers and sisters like Bruce. Like Ray, Rebecca, I mean, yeah, I don't want to forget. Ready to, to encourage you, to help you. Ready, Paul Lucas, man, you know. Justin Johnson, Grace Ambassadors. Terence McLean from the end of the time. You can read it. It's a bit hard, I know, that's the way he is. But he, he, tells, he, he preaches the sound Pauline doctrine to the point that they really can help you and encourage you. It's free. The gospel of the grace of God is free. These resources are free. We can thank the Lord for that. And we can also thank those brothers and sisters. But the point of the matter is, make sure, make sure the people get saved and sealed by grace. Explain them. There's not their prayers, whatever they do, their baptism. This is, yeah. Bruce said the doctors are deceived ch children. Yeah, unfortunately, yes. Explain them the Christ, who is God blessed forever. He died for their sins. Who was better, rose again. First Corinthians 51 to 4. Okay, grace and peace to all. Love you all.